नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू हंड्रेड एंड एपिसोड ऑफ ट्रिपल ए वीकली वेबिनार सीरीज टुडे आई एम स्पीकिंग फ्रॉम ए कंट्री व्हिच इज वेरी कोल्ड सो देयर फॉर आई एम वेरी स्वेटर्स द सब्जेक्ट दैट वी चोज टुडे वाज द राइट्स ऑफ डिसेंटिंग क्रेडिटर्स अंडर आईपीसी in a resolution plan the issue is definitely controversial one that the supreme court two different benches have given two different opinions and finally it has been now referred to the larger bench and the decision is awaited second the what is the liquidation value due to dissenting financial creditor that issue is also pending before honorable supreme court a reason that the supreme court has not been able to decide whether this priority of charges and value of security interest would be considered under section 53 while distributing the proceeds to secured financial creditors so that is the issue which is pending before honorable supreme court in the case of technology development board versus anil goel that is me and that was the matter which anclet had decided that once the security interest is relinquished in favor of the liquidator then everyone would be considered as pari pasu and the distribution would be made according to the proportion of the claim so this is what was decided by anclet and then the appeal is pending before honorable supreme court in fact say four or five matters have actually been tagged together and we are expecting a decision on this after the amendments in the ipc for the time being there are many cases which are uh, actually in, in fact struggling uh, in various uh, forums various courts and especially various home buyers cases where the uh, apparently there is no hair cut to home buyers but there are uh, hair cuts to secured financial creditors so therefore today we chose that and the trigger of choosing this particular judgment was that very very, very recently there was a judgment from anclet uh, principal bench where the principal bench has again said that the uh this uh, resurgent india arc judgment in the case of amit metallics that is still valid till the time the larger bank decides because see the opinion given by another bench is yet to be verified by the larger bench and that was only an opinion so therefore we would start with the uh, we would start with our <clears throat> the understanding about what are the rights of the dissenting uh, financial creditors under the resolution plan so uh, let us first of all look at to the provisions under the ipc now ipc says under uh, section 30 and sub clause 2 it says the resolution professional shall examine each resolution plan received by him to confirm that each resolution plan provide for payment of debt of operational creditor in such manner as specified by the board which shall not be less than so in fact we are not today on operational creditors then it moves on to part a clause 2 that amount that would have been paid to such creditor then the again it says is a uh, provide for payment of debt of financial creditors who do not vote in favor of the resolution plan in such manner as may be specified by the board which shall not be less than the amount to be paid to such creditors in accordance with subsection 1 of section 53 in the event of a liquidation of the corporate debtor now when we see section 53 subsection 1 of the ibc 
that particular distribution process is still under litigation. The NCLAT says that once the security interest is relinquished in favor of the liquidation estate, then in that case, everyone will be considered as pari pasu. Whereas in the resolution plan, section 30 subsection 4 says that the committee of creditors while approving a resolution plan may, may consider the priority of charge and the value of security interest of each stakeholder and would consider as if the conditions of section 53 subsection 1 are met. Now, the conditions of Section 53, Subsection 1 itself is under litigation. The It has not been able to kind of get concluded that this uh, uh, this will be, a, a, see the, what is the liquidation value, how it would be distributed, whether the priority of security interest and the value of security interest would be considered by the liquidator while distributing under Section 53, Subsection 1. So these are the matters still pending. So in the meantime, the uh, first in case we see there are various judgments, then we also have to see what finally the board said, what IBBI said in the regulations. Regulations 38, which actually are mandatory contents of the resolution plan and as per the mandate in case the mandatory contents, uh, mandatory legal contents of the resolution plan are not met, then the resolution plan cannot be accepted and the adjudicating authority has the power to reject a resolution plan. Now, in this case, the mandatory content says that the resolution plan shall identify specific sources of funds that will be used to pay one CIRP cost to the liquidation value due to operational creditors and provide for such payment in priority. And the third is the liquidation value due to dissenting financial creditors and provide that such payment is made before any recoveries are made by the financial creditors who voted in favor of the resolution plan. So what a regulation says that the liquidation value has to be paid and it has to be paid before any other recoveries are made by the financial creditors, secured or unsecured, before any recovery is made by any other creditor, the liquidation value has to be paid to the dissenting creditor. So there are two disputes. One is what is the liquidation value? Liquidation value as per the NCLAT judgment in the case of Technology Development Board versus Anil Goyal or as per the Section 30, Subsection 4, which says that the priority of charges and value of security interest may be considered. So when this word may is used there in section 30, subsection 4, which is primarily for the resolution plan, then the courts have been saying that it is the uh, commercial wisdom of the committee of creditors that will prevail because the word written there is may. And as far as the liquidation value due to financial creditors is concerned, that is something which is is not yet completely decided and what is the liquidation value. Whether while deciding the liquidation value, whether the value of their security interest would be considered or not, that is pending before the Honorable Supreme Court. Now, this is when the, these discussions are uh, for resolution plan section 30 subsection 4 has to be considered. In section 30 subsection 4, uh, the reference has been made to section 53, subsection 1 of the IBC. Now, the interpretation of section 53, subsection 1 is pending before Honorable Supreme Court. So, therefore, many such cases where the value of security interest is much higher, however, the proportionate liquidation value due to financial creditor is much smaller because of considering them as pari pasu. Therefore, the matters are uh, uh, under litigation. So, the like when we talk about the first judgment that came in this respect was in the case of SR Steel India Limited versus Satish Kumar Gupta, and that is the, the very old judgment 
15th November 2019, and it is from NCLAT, and the principal bench, in fact, said, the principal bench in this case said that the uh, commercial wisdom, uh, because of this word may, the commercial wisdom is the supreme, and once the committee of creditors decides, that would be uh, valid. Commercial wisdom of the COC actually has been granted a discretion by using the word may. The, uh, the COC has been granted basically a discretion to link, look at certain other considerations also while approving a resolution plan. Therefore, the value of security interest and the order of priority may or may not be considered by the committee of creditors. So that has been held by the NCLAT as long as as back as in uh, 2019 so this was also one of the very important judgment and the other which is important judgment is finally that judgment somehow is differentiated by the judgment of uh, india resurgence versus amit metallics this judgment that i am talking about is in fact very very protective for the dissenting financial creditors this judgment is J.P. Kensington Boulevard Apartments Welfare Association versus NBCC India Limited. This judgment was delivered by Honorable Supreme Court in the case of J.P. Infratech Limited Insolvency. And this was delivered on 24th of March, 2021. So when we say that, uh, uh, so okay, this is the uh, subject today and the uh, issue is still under uh, a lot of confusion. So, anything that you would like to add uh, in this regard? And I think we should understand what is the current position of law, what is the current practice that would be optimal. And I think that's what we need to follow till the time jurisprudence is final on these subjects. And as you're saying that, yes, it has a very, very important implication on the entire distribution and the entire process. And the whole idea that, you know, logically and understandably that I feel is that dissenting creditors uh, are required to get at least what they would get in case of liquidation. Now, in case what they would get in liquidation is under dispute, then that is, of course, a big question on, you know, what their rights are. So, anyway, let's see what the judgments are. Let's see what are the other uh, implications. Good, Ankit. So, in this particular judgment, in this JP uh, Kensington, in the case of uh, uh, JP Infra Tech Limited, the Supreme Court, in fact, decided much, much in favor of the dissenting financial creditors. The dissenting financial creditors, it was said that uh, the requirement under Section 30, Subsection 2 is to make actual payment of the requisite amount. Uh, to the dissenting financial creditors and they are uh, not supposed to be dragged into the resolution plan and the word written there is payment and none, nobody can say that whatever asset was secured to them that is handed over to them and they will recover it of their own or whatever recovery will come from that asset that will be given to them so that was something which was rejected by uh, Honorable Supreme Court in this case, and the Honorable Supreme Court said, the in fact, I would read the what court observed in this case. The court observed that for the purpose of discharging the obligation mentioned in the second part of clause B of section 30, subsection 2 of the code, the dissenting financial creditors are to be paid an amount. So these two things, the paid and the amount was emphasized quantified in terms of the proceeds of the asset receivable under section 53 of the code and the amount payable is to be paid in priority over their assenting counterparts. The statute is referring only to the sum of money and not anything else. In the frame and support of the provision and also in the scheme of the code, the expression payment is clearly descriptive of the action of discharging an obligation and at the same time it is also prospective it is also prescriptive of the mode of undertaking such an action and that action could only be handing over the quantum of money 
or allowing the recovery of such money by enforcement of security interest as per the entitlement of dissenting financial creditor. So the court further held that made it very clear that in case a valid security interest is held by a dissenting financial creditor, the entitlement of such dissenting financial creditor to receive the amount could be satisfied by allowing him to enforce the security interest to the extent of the value receivable by him and in order to priority available to him. So this, you see, the court clarified that by enforcing such a security interest, the dissenting financial creditor would receive payment to the extent of his entitlement, and that would satisfy the requirement of section 30, subsection 2, and clause B of the code. Although uh, this particular judgment also hinted that the value of the security interest and the priority of the charge would be considered. It only hinted, but this particular issue was not before the court. So therefore, no uh, specific decision took place in this case. So therefore, like this particular judgment was favoring the secured the dissenting financial creditor. Why one? That it has to be paid. And it cannot be said that the amount, uh, it should be money. It should not be uh, any kind of uh, uh, like uh, in a resolution plan, we can't drag a particular person that once this particular asset would be sold, that would be given to him. That is something, some dragging somebody in a resolution plan. So this dissenting creditors uh, who are not voting for a resolution plan, they have to be paid a specific sum of money. And that should be the money which otherwise also they would get in case they would enforce their security interest in liquidation process. So the argument from the dissenting financial creditors are that in case the company goes into liquidation, then they would and they would invoke section 52. They will not relinquish their security interest in favor of the uh, liquidator. They will enforce their security interest and they would realize whatever the value of their security interest is. So therefore, the their contention is right. Uh, however, the matter is pending before the Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Technology Development Board versus Anil Goyal. So therefore, uh, there is no, uh, in, the, in the next judgment from uh, Honorable Supreme Court, in the case of India Resurgence ARC Private Limited versus Amit Metallics Limited, that judgment was dated 13th of May 21. In this case, the uh, in this case, the Honorable Supreme Court held that the uh, the in this case the, uh, the case is again like India Resurgence ARC Private Limited uh, is a secured financial creditor and is also dissenting. So it, they challenged the resolution plan of Amit. Um, uh, so you see. Uh, Amit Metallics Limited, they, in fact, India Resurgent uh, contended that the value of their security interest and the priority was not adequately considered. They also argued that their descent to the resolution plan stemmed from the insufficient over uh, amount offered to them, and the amount offered to them was only 2.03 uh, crores as against their admitted claim of about 13.38 crores and the value of the security that they were holding that was considered to be 12 crores. So in case the company would have gone to liquidation, they argued that we could have invoked section 52, we could have realized our security interest of 12 crores and the resolution plan is only giving us 2.03 crore. That was their uh, strong contention. Now, the Supreme Court, in fact, uh, crystallized the issue uh, whether the resolution plan approved by the Committee of Creditor, uh, which allegedly uh, failed to consider the priority of value and the priority of charge and the value of the security interest, and whether that particular resolution plan can be uh, accepted by the adjudicating authority, whether that resolution plan is compliant to law. So 
whether it was supposed to be rejected or not. So that was the issue before this Honorable Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court finally held that the uh, the applicant's contention uh, that the resolution plan did not consider the priority and the value of security interest. Uh, they so the, the, the Supreme Court said that the resolution plan is also supposed to ensure equitable treatment of similarly situated creditors. The plan did not discriminate unfairly between the creditors because what was allocated to India resurgence was the uh, again the proportionate amount which is allocated to all the financial creditors and the it was not basically considering the priority of charges and the value of security interest. However, the amount was offered overall distribution to the secured financial creditor which came to 2.03 crores. The Supreme Court also uh, observed in such case that the COC has to consider such priority and the value of security interest. That is not necessary because the word written there is may and the COC's decision but found to be in compliance with the mandatory provisions of the IBC. Therefore, the resolution plan was considered as fair and equitable to all stakeholders. The Supreme Court further uh, said that the dissenting creditor's right to receive payments based on their security interest must be balanced against the COC's broader mandate to resolve the corporate debtor insolvency in a manner that maximizes the asset value. Uh, the resolution plan's approval, according to the court, did not violate any statutory rights of the dissenting creditors and was within the COC's commercial wisdom. So therefore, the particular uh, judgment was given uh, against the dissenting financial creditors. So after that, in January, on 3rd January 2024, the another judgment came from Honorable Supreme Court, that is DBS Bank Singapore versus Ruchi Soya Industries Limited, where the DBS Bank was a dissenting creditor and it was claiming to have a specific charge, exclusive charge on few of the immovable properties of the company situated in Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and some commercial value, commercial office in Mumbai. So according to DBS Bank Singapore, the value of all these securities in fact were very, very high and the amount which was offered to uh, DBS Bank was not according to the uh, value of their security. So in this case, the bench consisting of uh, Justice Sanjeev Khanna and Justice S.V. and Bhatti, they in fact said that the judgment which was given in the case of India resurgence and the opinion which was given by the Honorable Supreme Court, they dissented with that opinion. They in fact very clearly said that uh, that opinion seems to be incorrect, considering that this person, in case of liquidation, this person like DBS Bank Singapore, they actually had the right of invoking Section 52, realizing whatever the security value that they have, and they should have got at least that value, which they otherwise could have got if the company had gone to liquidation. With this uh, the but then it was a basic issue that this bench was also a, a two a judge, two member bench and the earlier the judgment of India resurgence was also given by two member bench so therefore they could not override that judgment so they referred that matter to a larger bench so therefore this matter went to the Chief Justice of India and still pending there now after this after this judgment of DBS Bank Limited versus Ruchi Soya Industries Limited everyone started saying that Amit Metallics is not applicable now because see, the Supreme Court has already given an opinion that the Amit Metallics judgment is incorrect and therefore the value of the security interest and the priority of charges may be considered. Everyone started thinking that way, but 
Then came this judgment of uh, 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 from the principal bench of NCLAT, and that judgment came on 27th of May 24. 27th of May 24, when this in the case of uh, a Beacon Trusteeship Limited versus Jaish Sangrajka, and this was in the case of Radius Estate and Developers Private Limited. It's a Mumbai case. So in this case, Justice Ashok Bhushan, chairperson or chairman of the NCLAT, in fact, said very clearly on two issues. Why will first we will attend to the issue which is relevant to our discussion? And they said that the judgment of uh, India Resurgence ARC versus Amit Metallics Limited is still in use it can still be relied upon because the opinion given in dbs bank limited versus ruchi soya is still pending with a larger bank it is still pending with the chief justice of india so therefore india resurgence is still valid for the time being till we have a judgment from the uh, the larger bench so therefore the in this case in the case of uh, uh, beacon Trusteeship Limited. The issue was that the home buyers was given were given their uh, units, and the this uh, Beacon Trusteeship Limited, uh, representing a secured financial creditor, then they actually, in fact, uh, one was the Beacon Trusteeship Limited, and the other was ICICI Prudential Venture Capital Fund Real Estate Scheme. So they said that they, in fact, were secured financial creditors and they were given a haircut. They were given a haircut and that haircut was 93% haircut where there was no haircut to the home buyers. That was the fact. So they, they in fact, argued that one, that the valuation report with regard to the properties mortgage to them was, uh, in, uh, was not accurate. Some facts were not given to the valuers. So therefore, the this particular aspect was in fact uh, rejected by NCLAT by saying that the Supreme Court's ruling in the case of Ramakrishna Forging Limited versus Ravindra Lunakar, this particular ruling uh, is still valid. And the Supreme Court said that the valuation of immovable property is inherently uncertain and cannot be exact. The valuation of valuation by experts cannot be disregarded. On objections filed by the dissenting financial creditor, the court upheld the validity of valuation report, stating that they had been reviewed by the COC and shared with all financial creditors, and the resolution plan has been approved by overwhelming response, like 83% was the total voting share in the case of resolution plan. So therefore, the valuation reports are not likely to be challenged. So they rejected this argument. And the second, regarding the haircut to only secured financial creditors, that was also very uh, kind of uh, uh, rejected by saying that this uh, judgment of India resurgent is still valid. And finally, the commercial wisdom of committee of creditors who approved this resolution plan with 83% vote, that also would stand as completely uh, valid the commercial wisdom is valid the supreme this committee of creditors has to consider various other uh, consultations and also uh, only for the, uh, with the with the objective of maximizing the uh, value for all the stakeholders so ankit i think this is the uh, time that we can take some of the questions uh, saying that matter is still under uh, kind of uh, litigation uh, we uh, cannot conclude as of now that amit metallics india but india resurgence is not applicable uh, dissenting financial creditors have not got any relief uh, with the judgment of dbs in the case of ruchi soya and valuation reports are not supposed to be challenged the rights of the secured financial creditor in the case of liquidation in case they invoke section 52 has not been kind of accepted by the courts there are various questions and there are some people that are even raising hands 
we can even uh, uh, seek their questions and we can uh, try to answer all these questions. So everyone is, of course, pointing out to the idea that, you know, if a financial creditor is a secured financial creditor and, you know, Section 53 allow, allots a lesser entitlement to that person and let's say he doesn't have the voting power to block a resolution plan, then everyone is, of course, giving a hint or rather, you know, sharing how that might be a skewed idea that had the insolvency not been there, the person would could have enforced his security interest and gotten more money. Now that he is part of the insolvency process, there is no way that he can get that money. He will only be getting proportionate value. At the same time, we have seen that the same creditor, in case he is having a higher percentage of voting in the COC, then he would say that, okay, you give me more money based on my security and give less to the others based on my voting share. So this is what is practically what, you know, uh, everyone is sharing, that there is a difficulty here or rather everyone feels that the value of security should be considered when everyone is sharing the pie of the resolution plan. So that's the general uh, feedback that is coming. Apart from that, of course, um, um, I think that, that's about it. Maybe the people who have raised hands, I can ask them to speak. So Anita ji, also take some questions. Some, some questions also can be taken in case there are some specific questions. One question is why are you wearing a sweater? <laughs> <laughs> I said I am presently I am traveling to Norway and Norway is very cold. And also presently today we are at a hill station of Norway and the temperature outside is almost three degree. So therefore I am wearing a sweater. <laughs> So, uh, apart from that, I think you will have to allow Anita ji to speak or make me co-host. Anita ji is raising her hand. Apart from that, uh, one of the, uh, we have Mr. Manluk asking that, how the financial institutions accept haircut since value of properties secured, improved, lot diversion of funds, beneficiaries are available able to repay better financial institutions wait and recover all outstanding even if there is a delay um, didn't get your question per se but then yes when the insolvency process starts the idea is to we, we always say that the idea is to preserve the business preserve the company preserve the assets and that's why you know taking a long time to kind of realize these assets realize value from these assets can really create uh, inefficiencies with that objective I believe that is the idea to quickly resolve the problem. Then if there's a question yes, from then there's a question from Mr. Jindal. He says in the case of Pari Pasu charge, if some secured creditors wants to relinquish and some do not want, then how the liquidator will decide to accept the relinquishment? So relinquishment can happen one only in liquidation. There is no relinquishment that is possible in CARP. But yes, in case of Pari Pasu charge. Uh, all the people need to relinquish, uh, sorry, uh, relinquishment is automatic, but yes, all the all the creditors need to withdraw the relinquishment or choose not to relinquish in case they would want not want that asset to be part of liquidation, right? That's the idea. So there are, like see, these kind of disputes have also gone to NPLAT, like the, uh, there is a paripasu charge and some people are ready to relinquish and some are not. So, so the, this is not yet addressed in the regulations. No, no, it has been addressed by NCLAT in one of the judgments where the NCLAT has said that the majority have relinquished and therefore this relinquishment would be considered valid. Okay. And if the minority are still saying that they don't want to relinquish, but it will be decided based on the majority. So majority rule applies. Yeah, I mean, even in the surface also, when there is a pari pasu charge, so uh, I think... Uh, uh, 60 is the word there. More than 60% uh, secured creditor will have to uh, vote for the, we uh, will have to give their mandate for invoking surface. Otherwise, the surface also cannot be invoked. So, similarly, the relinquishment of uh, uh, security interest in favor of liquidation estate, this also is based on the unclear judgment in that case. Probably, if I faintly remember, they said that if 66% uh, will relinquish, then it will be considered as valid relinquishment and all others will have to follow. Mm. Okay. 
then uh, there's a question with respect to security so it says financial creditor if he has in security 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 interest of third party assets will the fc be considered a secured creditor in the insolvency process the security is not on company's assets the security is on third party assets no see the security interest has to be on the assets owned by the corporate debtor if the security interest is a collateral security which is not owned by the corporate debtor then the claim would be admitted as unsecured financial creditor however the a claimant will have the right to proceed against that asset to proceed against the security interest and to recover it even during the cirp or even during the liquidation so there is no there is no moratorium on the enforcement of that particular asset however there are a couple of judgment they say that even if you uh, recover that amount you cannot appropriate that you can actually keep it in a separate account and uh, so that it doesn't become recovery during the pendency of uh, uh, cir or during moratorium under section 14 so uh, then um, of course there are apart from this um, so i believe that's it maybe we can just let the uh, raised hand speak yes you yeah you have to give me co-host strikes yes so i'm asking anita ji to put up her question please see ye anita ji i'm also asking vijay ji in case he can unmute himself mr vijay goel ranjan ji also in case you can unmute yourself sir yes vijay ji sir uh, my query is that in resolution plan if the uh, secured financial creditor would get uh, less value then the valuation of the assets uh, there uh, on which their uh, security interest is uh, there so uh, there is a scope that uh, they will also uh, they all will always go for uh, disputing the resolution plan so uh, is there in uh, in uh, in the case of ramkrishna forging uh, is can you please uh, tell me in the case of, uh, is there is a finality uh, in this matter and uh, so that we can uh, think that yes as enclat has uh, told that uh, as the uh, situation has not uh, reached finality then we can uh, follow the uh, resurgent uh, resurgent uh, uh, case uh, otherwise someone may also uh, follow that uh, recent uh, case of dbs bank so uh, does this uh, recent case of dbs bank uh, any where uh, any where has the uh, superiority over the old case of uh, resurgent no i think we have discussed all this today that this uh, the recent case uh, of uh, in the case of uh, radius uh, uh, case of mumbai uh, in the case of jaish sangrajka in the case of beacon trusteeship limited this anclat has said that the still the view given by the supreme court in the case of india resurgence versus amit metallics is valid because the other view is pending before the larger bench and once the larger bench will decide then that view would be usable presently what we can use is only india resurgent versus amit metallics judgment which says that the the financial the secured financial creditors if they are treated at par in as the other similar creditors are being treated that will be considered as compliance of the law 
therefore the resolution plan if accepted by the committee of creditors would not be kind of rejected that was the view given by the india resurgence versus amit medalics so that view is still valid so this uh, like beacon trusteeship limited judgment is still saying that the the chairman of the enclat is still saying that that view is still valid till the time the other view is formed by the larger bench thank you vijay ji maybe you can speak up uh, uh i am now uh, am i audible very yes well. you are oh, okay Uh, good morning, Anil ji. I think you must have recognized me from PNB. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh, Anil ji, you must be not not be knowing. We had a very very old, uh, long association, Anil ji. Yes, I think yes. going back to two thousand, we had surface yet then, and we had a, a, a long experience. Actually, sir, yes, what yes. what we why, we know you as we know you as VK Goel. Uh, it is for the benefit of everyone, and I think I may may be in a position to add something, some a different uh, view, and why this uh, this issue is coming up. Actually, sir, yeah, actually, if we see the the basic object that says fairness in resolution plan, taking address, take care of everybody's stakeholder, and maximization of value. So, until the this. If we see the situation where there is a multiple banking or consortium banking, because there is no separate security by and large. In that situation, even if I am a dissenting, there will not be a much difference, because under thirty four, it says, which may take into account the order of priority under fifty three L. Including the priority and value of security interest of a secured creditor, so it has mentioned that priority be has to be taken into account into account as well as value of security. So if if I am a I am in a consortium where everything is in a one fifty, so even I remain a sentient creditor, my share will be proportionate to the value of security. This situation of Distraction arises. One is in one is in the Amit Metallic and another in the DBS case, where the security was exclusive, and similar similar situations are arising where there is a home buyer type of situation, where sometimes sometimes this because of the they are small amount like that, so they are being paid for. So now coming back to the resolution plan itself, suppose. There is a secured creditor resolution plan. Suppose there is a hundred rupees available with a secured creditor. That is the value of the asset with a secured creditor. So if I now prepare a plan, definitely I have to put some money for the operational creditor, some money for the workman, some money for the government, some for the unsecured creditor. So it is obvious that in every resolution plan approved. The secured creditor has to forego his security depending upon his wisdom and the claim of the workman, uh, the operational creditor, government dues, and unsecured creditor. Otherwise, in in case the secured creditor always feels that I would I have full cake, the, there cannot be any resolution plan. Resolution plan can only be prepared if the secured creditor is ready to forego. Some cake, some piece of cake. It may be twenty percent, it may be ten percent, depending on what sets of each case. So, I don't know. Uh, recollect there. We understand, uh, Vijay ji. Like I could get you what you are saying. Like I, I would like to revert on this. See, think of the new breed of banks. They are in fact financing to uh, various companies whenever the company needs. anything for their urgent need and they are financing it based on their uh, security collateral security or security interest in some cases it may be against the equity shares in some cases it may be against some immovable property so what happens to this kind of funding in case like i'll give you an example then one company is say having a 1000 crores of credit from different banks and company is in need of say, say another 50 crores now the company has some shares which actually has a value of 100 crore company goes to a bank and pledge those shares of 100 crores and take a loan of 50 crores 
Now, what is the mistake made by that bank? The bank had done the due diligence. The shares were in the name of the company. It was all sellable. The Everything was absolutely fine. And after about six months time, the company goes into insolvency. Now, in case the resolution plan is coming, which is only for 200 crore. So the every financial creditor is getting 20%. You mean to say that the person who has funded this particular 50 crore will also get 10 crores. So if this would no. be the scenario. I will explain. Sir, I am interrupting you. I will explain. So in case the... Actually, what, case this actually be the what should happen? Yes, sir, I, I know so many scenario. I will give you more scenario also. Sir, in, in such situation when there is a multiple and consortium lending, there is a, always a clause in our document. I think that the situation cannot... that actually, no, one second, the situation that I am saying, there are many situations like this that the bank... No, no, I will deal with this very, situation. Very, very, very diligent no, no. scenario. Have I given know, it... I know, sir. Yes. But I will deal with this situation, no, sir. First, I will deal with this situation where 50 crore is separate security and 200 crore is a separate security. Okay, no, sir. this is fine, no, sir. it means you have been dealing with me for th all throughout and I, I put my more stake on you up to 200 crore, one fine morning, because in the all loan document, there is a clause, you will not take any loan further other, other than us and without our prior permission. So what is this going on that the private bank are not following that? that the terms of the loan as well as the borrower is not followed. So sometimes exclusive charges are being created. So to cut short, the solution is either the IBC should provide that in case any exclusive charge is created in favor of another bank secured creditor, the secured creditor will have to forego from their security equivalent to the security, the sacrifice being taken by the secured creditor. If, if you don't provide that, there will be more and more exclusive security and one fine day because the, 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 the main lenders are filing up, uh, funding against the movable, movable asset, current asset. So current asset is the first casualty. So you will say that, look, gentlemen, you don't have any security. I have exclusive, I will have full kit. That, that cannot be there. So my suggestion only is because what I am, why I am discussing with you, sir, you have been in many committees and like that. So while discussing this subject before whatever committee you present there, you can suggest them that for the lending where there is a consortium lending, it will hardly matter. COC has to take a call. If it, when it is dissenting, it will have priority as per priority value of security. There will be no difference. But in case where exclusive security is created, either there is a, either the present lender has given consent that you have the exclusive right to enforce that. Okay, we will go with that, your exclusive right given and consented by the presenting lender that you can take their security, fine. But if they have violated the main terms of loan document or at the time of permission, the bankers say, no, we will have equal share because this situation is coming now. So there should be a clause that the exclusive charge holder security, because ultimately this is a money of asset of the company only, no, sir. So company can manage asset in a so many ways, na. So the my this is my submission because you have you are there in some but committee. Committee may not be a, no, uh, may not be uh, maybe. Uh, uh, I understand on how, uh, uh, how to resolve that. How to resolve that. How to put no, in I language. Can actually, I can actually. This is one suggestion. Others are saying. No, I can also say. This is one suggestion, sir. This is one suggestion. Because in the case of DBS, the city charge, the exclusive charge was so much high. It was around 500 crore and they got 200 crore. I don't, I don't know key, what was in uh, Sergeant ARC and White World, but in DBS, they, their exclusive charge was with uh, to some shares, etc. That was more value 500 crore. So there can be under IBC, there can be two, three situations. If the party is holding exclusive share, they, it can be, it can be given to that party subject to certain cut. So why I'm discussing with you and with the uh, the person other who are uh, listening to me because you are such a person who can convey this thing to the committee who are looking into these all uh, issues that look we can solve this problem by incorporating so many eventualities that in case of simple sector consortium there is nothing issue it will go share will be equal to in case of exclusive charge security it has to forego 
because then when he will take exclusive charge of a security he will be knowing that that lender will be knowing that in the case of resolution plan it has to go it has to suffer something it can he cannot at that stage say because i have exclusive charge i will not come so because that is the best thing for her, for the lender to say i will not come so this needs to be provided in the regulation and in the law itself that in such a case the exclusive lender holding exclusive security has to also to take care cut here cut it, it can be defined it may be proportion to that it may be lesser than that this is one the last commission is only with regard to operational director sir because they say operational i don't think uh, we are not uh, we are not discussing operational predictors today okay we are fine when, when that topic will come i will give my yes thank you sir so so now the other part which is saying the when the other people come like the uh, people who have given the loan <clears throat> with 100% diligence but they say that in case of uh, even working capital lenders also the drawing power is given based on the value of primary security and also they have collateral security there is no lending uh, which will be considered as secured uh, a creditor in case there is no primary security or collateral security they are saying that in case some banks are not diligent they are not trying to keep a watch on their primary security or their collateral security then they are trying to shift and they are trying to share their incompetence with those banks who are more diligent and they are having a very very kind of diligent land no, so then it will be sir. it is difficult is for us case, it, it is difficult no, no, for is us the, to answer their reason no, it is actually is... for us uh, it is difficult for us to answer because they are saying that their inefficiencies of not monitoring their primary security is coming to us and that should not be a penalty to us the penalty should go to them only it should not come to us so this is what is their argument anyway thank you very much no, no, sir, sir, that, that, that argument argument government can also say no, sir because i am i have chosen to be at number 5 uh, there is a smartness sir at, at really any point of time uh, no Goyal, sir, most of the made. most no, of the resolution plan they hear me out this this is like when i said this we now we can't shift to the government we can now say that the asra this government dues are concerned the government had taken this view only because the government thought and the vision of the government was that the survival of the enterprise is more important the uh, employment is more important the gdp is more important production is more important than collecting yeah, i i understand so, so that's also banking that, that also view, also, that, also banks are more important uh -huh. also the banks are important. because in but case the government dues that was the dues and the government, the, government authority to... and the government dues were given fifth line that was the main sir we can, was not we can at all based on the security consortium and and exclusive lending sir exclusive yes. charge lending some solution can be find there so that coc will now, also now have the government idea. probably goel sir the probably the government is coming with an amendment i i am not a insider i am only talking about the hearsay which is going in the market the government is coming with an amendment that the secured financial creditor will be considered as secured to the extent of the value of security that they have they will have as on the commencement of cirp so then all these disputes will be settled so this is what oh. the government is coming with and um, also, this is only also, this is only a hearsay that we have heard in the market and that step will reward those banks who have preserved or who have taken action to preserve the security which is available yes. with the company yes yes this will reward that's what is my view also and we have the, seen uh, and we have seen stock comprises where we have seen a factory where nothing is left no stock nothing is left at the crp date we have also seen other factories where you know uh, the uh, stock was actually on the on the lines only while the manufacturing was happening then it was stopped because you know surface action was so swift or rather the possession was so swift that yes everything was preserved so the so wherever the banks people. have taken actions to protect and preserve their security <clears throat> the loss is lesser so the banks have to be very very proactive in considering whether the unit is working well or not working well so i think ankit I, we can take uh, one or more questions we have another 3 minutes with us so we i am asking pankaj ji in case he has something to say maybe he can unmute himself yeah thank you 
Yeah, thank you. So, Anna, uh, two uh, small basic query uh, with respect to uh, due regard to all our colleagues. One is that uh, if the uh, descending data has to get what other is getting, then why this clause is included? The liquidation value priority, why it is included? Why somebody descend? The idea is to he don't have faith in the resolution plan, or he's not getting a good value, right? If you remember in the CDR yeah. era, BFR, BFR era, what used to happen? We used to those who used to the part of the voting is to approve the plan, right? If the, somebody is not agreeing, means he should get the either this clause should be removed from the law itself. He, okay, there is no descending liquidation value priority. This is not required, na? If the descending gate has to get the what others are getting, so what is the purpose of this clause? I am absolutely will... agree with you, Pankaj. Ah. I absolutely agree with you. So I if mean... I disagree, if I disagree means I, I disagree means I am not having faith. I am not getting what I supposed to get. That is why somebody disagree. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. Keeping aside his ego, ego and all uh, that is, I am not coming into it. So absolutely, the, absolutely. The, and uh, as some uh, one of my colleagues, uh, one of the attendees said, ki, where the people are the voting higher voting right, people screw the other people and get what they are supposed to get. Where the people are in the minority or having lesser uh, influential voting power, they get uh, lesser than the value of the uh, liquidation value. This practice uh, should be avoided in the COC. It should be uniform. We have seen in many cases one COC one hour back, one person has one stand. In the second hour, second COC, he has a second another stand. So this is actually defeating the purpose for all the together. Once the law, like you said, running correctly, that when the law comes, this will be settled. Otherwise, sir, what will happen? If somebody is sponsoring or getting a security by just a bicycle of the, of the giving hundred crore loan and getting a security on a bicycle and secure loan you want to give, he secure and take it to NCLT and get more, more than that, right? So this will defeat the purpose. Very right, very right. So there is a, so the liquidation uh, value on the on the priority also you should get. That is why descending I should get out uh, prior to uh, the what the money other people are getting. You know, in one of the cases, the priority is given. You will get money at eleven o'clock. We'll get money at eleven fifteen. That was the logic given. Yeah, it looks yeah. very funny sometimes, right? This is the priority as per law. It's not a. This is not a priority. The priority means if you are getting money in five years. I will not wait five years. You pay me money in six months, one year. I know priority cannot be decided. Uh, the based on the cash flow in how the flow money is coming into system, it can be a priority based on that, not on the priority of eleven o'clock or eleven fifteen. Right? Very uh, funny. This this this, this 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 has happened in many of the uh, cases. That judgment also and that kind of attitude of COC also it uh, like it is not what the law uh, wanted to say. It is exactly what the law the law had given a priority to the dissenting creditor and that should be honored by the committee of creditors and also by the I think once this judgment will come once the priority will come. See, primarily, uh, Pankaj, the difficulty is that this matter whether the priority of charges and the value of security interest will be considered in liquidation by the liquidator while distributing that is pending before the Supreme Court. That is the reason all these uh, uh, kind of controversial judgments are coming. I think we can, uh, Ankit, uh, we've already we have uh, done our... Uh, so one, one, small, one small one small query, and, and, sorry, sorry, just one small query, not on this part, only suppose in case uh, uh, liquidation value is uh, 100 and uh, uh, we are getting 120 by negotiation, somebody will get so the extra 20 also the descending gate get a uh, kitty from there also if uh, people agree for liquidation value or no? No, no. You see, like <clears throat> there cannot be any amount which is given to any person more than their claim. In case there is an additional recovery, then the shareholders will get that money. Very good. No, not shareholders. Say so like 100 rupees the claim amount, 10 rupees the liquidation value. For example, typically, by negotiation, if like, you know, we will get 15 rupees, right? So descending will get any part of the share out of the extra 5 rupees or no? I will go to the other ascending gate. Now, in the case of resolution plan, uh, this there is nothing like recovery. There is no measurement of the recovery. Once the resolution plan is approved, after that, everything will be done by the successful resolution applicant. So, in the case of uh, liquidation, there is no uh, concept of dissenting creditors. See, what you are uh, saying is in the case of liquidation, whatever no, is... No, liquidation plan, uh, plan is approved. Plan is approved. So... Pankaji, in resolution plan, uh, there is nothing like recovery from an asset. It is only resolution and every asset, uh, assets are not being sold. That recovery, the, the successful resolution applicant has to say later on whether he would like to sell the assets or he would like to continue the company as a going no, sir, As a plan, yes, one minute, I should say, I know we are overstepping by two minutes already. So the, uh, 100 with the claim amount, 
10 will be the liquidation value of the company. And so in this scenario, if it will be 10 rupees the plan value, then descending creditor says 20%, you will get 2 rupees, right? Is the liquidation value of his 2 rupees. But if you get 15 rupees for extra 5 rupees, whether that descending creditor no, will get extra. Descending creditor has got descending creditor has got no right on the extra. No right on the extra. Yes. Yeah. Operational creditors do have. Operational creditors do have, but not the uh, uh, descending creditors. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, thank you. Tankit, I think we can conclude this. Yes, I think that's the uh, that's the way. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you all the Thank you very much. Thank and you. This is our thank you. 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 Thank you.